Hello, this is Sebastian and I welcome you in Montenegro today where we have an extremely special chainmail hauberk. We can say it's a hauberk because it has a shirt body and a coif attached. And we're just looking at this and trying to figure out how that coif is actually patterned, how it's tailored. When I first stumbled into pictures of that hauberk on the internet, I became obsessed with it. I had to understand the pattern and the tailoring. So I took the picture and I added red dots and then connected that dots by lines to understand the mesh and to see if there's any deviation from the 4-in-1 pattern. But that wasn't enough. I needed to understand how the coif is connected to the hauberk. So I had to go to Montenegro and find out. It's very interesting. At the moment, the rings are connected by, by pieces of nylon string and we have to figure out what is actually connection of rings and what is a connection of strings to understand that pattern. And as of now, it looks like the pattern continues like this on that side. It does continue from the back up and we know that rows go all the way around the head just as of now we don't know what's happening on the top about the rings they seem to be riveted and solid there's clear evidence for rivet heads they show towards the outside they are flat towards the inside um, half of the rows they don't show rivet heads at all so at the moment we can imagine that they are drifted or punched or even welded so they are solid rings and the ring size is varying across the piece but in general it looks like the variations do have nothing to do with the uh, location so there can be small rings and big rings next to each other some rings under the armpit they are worn, they are a bit thinner, but that is likely due to fraction, uh, due to friction. And we have already found some tailoring happening here. It's a reduction of rows happening two times, making this sleeve um, smaller in circumference. And we had a look at the armpit. And it seems to be in a very simple fashion. So actually not much of a 90 degree connection, but rather these rows and those rows meeting in one point. So very easily tailored. But the general impression of the piece is very, very good. It looks very authentic. Here's a little riveted ring it's flat on this side and the rivet head would be showing on that side but I think the rivet is missing let's find another this one uh, you see it from the side the rivet head is pointing this direction and the side is flat this this side shows the, ri the rivet head the ring next to it seems to be riveted too or welded. The connection is very close. Yeah, overall a lot of riveted rings. Now let's look at this area. The um, rings have been have baked together due to corrosion. And there's a bit of sand on on them. Here a broken rivet. 
more rings that have been baked together. To get a better understanding, we will now cut the nylon strings and carefully open the mail around the head. We made this area loose. See, this is actually not connected, but this entire piece is connected to the torso. It goes up like this. This is a true connection. And then there are no expansions or anything. The pattern just continues regularly with this row actually going to the side. And here, the, we, this is just tied by line again. And this goes way up. Next, we are filling the gaps in the mail with blue marker rings. This is for two reasons. First, it helps us to see the full mail sheet as it was before. And second, it is distributing the weight of the rings. So single rings are relieved and there's less stress and they're less likely to be broken by the weight of the hauberk. We connected some parts here filled in the missing rings and as it looks of now the pattern continues from the chest up to the head and up and up and up and it's ending here and we need to figure out what this is really made for what it is. Is it ending in a helmet? It is quite a lot of material, so maybe it's made extra loose to tie it to the head, to allow it to open the head to go through, in a way. But this is not your regular coif as you would expect it. This flap here in the front, we don't know what it's doing. It is connected though to here, to the inside. This ring is connected to a ring on the outside. We see that this, perhaps a ventail or whatever, mail that goes to the front is connected double in here and it seems at an angle so this is indeed planned to be overlapping perhaps too close mm -hmm. like yeah like two pieces of mail that overlap to cover a gap yeah now let's try to understand what's actually going on and that means to add more blue rings mm -hmm. So, we connected more and more rings and all this part that was hanging up like this now looks like this. Still don't know, uh, let's look at this side. We still don't know what's happening at the very top, how that is connected. But now we see that material is going up and there is this sort of flap here, sort of ventail. And this brings to question where the opening is. It's probably closed from the side like this. We connected more area and this still looks like a ventail. We can see that it was that it was connected here. There is a connection of rings. This comes from underneath at an angle. It's 
it's connected at an angle. Rows go like this. And then this would be overlapping. Like this. Overlapping in the front. This goes to the front. Top of the coif. We still don't know. But as of now, it is imaginable. It is possible that it does form in the center in a way with and then let's look over here to fill this I had to take use of some expansions so here it's expanding downwards here it's expanding downwards here it's expanding upwards and here it's expanding downwards I think those are just irregularities. Maybe I was too fast in uh, connecting the pattern here, but I think it's not my mistake. I think those are manufacturing mistakes, or if we have more of that, it could be intentionally. Uh, let's look again at the armpit on the right side of the wearer. So, how does that happen? We see this row is continuing until here and that row is continuing until there and rows from the top come in like this and they must have met in this spot all together and of course it's ripped because forces um, forces meet all in this spot. What else do we see here? It's tight. There is a cut that goes all the way from here up to there. It's just a broken rings tied back together. Here's some ties, there's some ties, some ties here. The, the back seems to be split or at least there is a lot of material missing. There is no expansions or tailoring visible as of now. Here it's tied together. The cut goes up until there. Yep. Do we see some expansions here? No. It seems to be very simply tailored. Okay, let's look again at the top of the coif. So This is all going up regularly. The red rings, they hold it together, but it's just going up. There's nothing pointing in, into the direction that it's tapered in a way, as of now. <laughs> and it could be that it was closed by a lace or something. And Yeah, if, if we fill this area here, this is going up a little bit more. Yeah, hard to say at the moment. Our time is running out here and for now it looks like this. We mounted it to, to look like one piece at the moment so it can, be, can go back to the display until hopefully for a later time when there's more time to study it um, this needs to be properly researched and cannot be done in just one day unfortunately we're, we're limited in time here and also the museum stuff is limited in their capacities so 
Let's see how the future is continuing. I'm looking forward to your comments. We are all curious about which time this hauberk is from. Dating in armor like this is very challenging and honestly we cannot give it a specific date. But we will briefly share some thoughts and compare it with other pieces. First of all, the type of garment that we see is a short sleeved shirt with the built in coif. There are such garments shown in period central European artwork from roughly the 11th to the 13th century. It is not impossible though that these hauberks could be found in other cultural or chronological contexts. Second, the rings are a mix of riveted and solid rings, with the solid rings seemingly being fire welded. The male doesn't match the consistency and the appearance of late medieval male. The armor rather appears earlier, perhaps made in a small workshop. Third point is the male's tailoring or the lack thereof. Compared with the best of extant late medieval pieces, this hauberk has a primitive tailoring. At first glance, the torso is showing no signs of expansions or contractions, to give it a more anatomical shape. The armpits are constructed in a two-dimensional approach. This reminds of the find from Wimos, Denmark, which must be from the time between 0 to 600 AD. The Montenegro hauberk here is missing some practically useful features. Either the advanced design was not known to the manufacturer or not applied for unknown reasons. In case of doubt, I interpret this as a sign for the armor to be earlier. Fourth is the context and state of preservation. The hauberk is said to be discovered in a cave in 1936. That cave lies in a village named Donia Ranica near Barane in Montenegro. This circumstance could explain the remarkable good condition. Most early male shirts from the ground are in the condition of a rusty lump, and other male was cut up and reshaped into new pieces of armor. Hence, this hauberk has the potential to be an exceptionally rare example of an early time period. At this point, I want to thank everyone involved in this brief study. First of all, thank you to Mr. Obradovich and the staff from the museum who kindly allowed and encouraged us to look at the piece. And massive thank you goes to Anna and Damir Popoice. They helped me during all time to arrange the meeting, to get to the place and to study the object. Furthermore, I feel very grateful to have had master mailmaker Nicholas Jacksfield and Simon Metcalf from the Royal Collection Trust supporting me with their immense experience on the subject. They were pointing me towards the important details to look at. Also, thank you guys for following me here and on Instagram. Every one of you is represented by a little ring and the mail sheet keeps growing and growing. At the moment, we're 2000 people interested in chainmail. That's awesome. Keep posting, keep commenting and uh, see you next time.